Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makni on the Cell Guru Show and welcome to a whole new year, 2022. These are my promises. Unbelievable products, the best of them, exclusives all here first. And we'll start this off with the Oppo Find N. Foldables are slowly and gradually becoming better and Oppo has finally got into the foldable industry with the Find N. I've been very impressed with this device. I'll tell you why it's one of the best ever. We'll move on then to the Moto G51. Now, a lot of people providing 5G at a budget, but this is Motorola's attempt to really get ahead of them all. Then we'll move on to an incredibly good phone that I've found, the Techno Camon 18. So priced under 15,000 rupees, 48 megapixel selfie front camera, 48 megapixel triple rear camera, great battery, good screen, 7 GB virtual RAM expansion. So for 15,000 rupees and under, this is looking really, really good. And we'll end it all with my favorite campaign of the year, the Vivo Switch Off campaign in third year they're really doing this incredible statistics coming out first of all you know congratulations to vivo being a phone company they're actually doing a campaign where they're asking us to switch off our phones get a phone and life balance let's get started with today's cell guru show Our top story today is a game changer phone. Look, foldables are the future. The only problem is the future seemed very, very expensive. But with the Oppo Find N, this is Oppo's first foldable phone. They've actually done a lot of thinking. So I'll take you through some of the things that I really liked in the phone. So premium build and design looks really great. Very nice compact form factor. So, you know, foldables people think has to be big. But this one has something else. The first part I really like. Outer screen measures 5 0.49 inches, which makes it a delight to use the outer screen. You can type on it. Then this has got this flexion hinge, no crease at all. It's almost if it's not there. The gapless design also protects the inner display. 7.1 inches when unfolded, 120 refresh rate. One major thing, the inner screen is landscape, which gives you more screen real estate, whether you're reading or gaming. So I'm really, really hoping that this is a phone that changes everything because, you know, it's foldable, it's built well, it's got a Snapdragon 888, great battery, fast charging, everything you really need. We are still relatively early in the story of foldable and flexible smartphones and that's a good thing. It means different companies are still trying different shapes, sizes and forms to see what works best and put their stamp on this infant market. The Find series has always been about disruptive innovation and the foldable Find N is yet another attempt at that. While the Find N might look a little similar at first to other devices that exist, but there are differences that make the user experience drastically different. The first thing you notice is that the Find N is a real stunner. Everything about it feels premium right from the build quality, the aluminium frame or the satisfying sound when you fold the Find N. And the Oppo Find N just doesn't look great, but it feels incredibly comfortable to hold as well owing to its compact footprint. Oppo took a different approach from the other foldables in this department as it employs a traditional aspect ratio of 18 is to 9 which mimics a normal smartphone. And with a display size of 5.49 inches, you get more space for video and a less cramped typing experience. As a result, the device is easy to operate one-handed, comfortable to hold and not to mention more pocketable. The real pain point for all foldables right now is the crease when unfolded looks rather unpleasant to look at. But Oppo takes a different approach here as well. When you open the screen, you'll notice the screen doesn't feature a single distinct crease because of the way it curves inside the body when it's shut, which is similar to the Moto Razr. Oppo calls this a flexion hinge design that results in a minimal crease on the inside when unfolded, you are greeted with a large and immersive 7.1 inch inner AMOLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate that offers a lot of screen real estate. Additionally, Oppo did something different and a rather good one with the phone having a landscape mode that makes great use of the extra width whether you are reading, gaming or consuming media. The rest of the Find N spec sheet is what you would expect from a 2021 Android flagship. You get one of the best performing Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipsets with 8 or 12 GB of fast DDR5 RAM. And what this translates to is a smooth user experience. The Find N can do this all day and some more without breaking a sweat. 
and all day this device will do with a 4500 mAh battery that can easily last all day. And when you do get yourself plugged in, there is a 33 watt fast charger in the box but we wish Oppo included one of the faster ones with this. As much as foldables are known for offering big screens, productivity is also one of the main areas that they focus on. The Find N has many software-based, user-customizable options to improve multitasking. The most useful is Dual Window, which splits the display in half to use two apps side by side with a simple dual finger swipe down the middle of the screen. Floating Window is another handy way to multitask if you still want to use the larger display to its full potential. Camera-wise, there is a 50MP primary sensor coupled with a 16MP ultra-wide and a 13MP telephoto lens with 2x optical zoom to give you that bit of versatility. The main camera performs very well in almost all conditions which can also be said of the 2x telephoto camera. The photos are very detailed with a wide dynamic range and fairly natural color reproduction. The ultra-wide angle camera in sufficient lighting can take decent images. There are also two selfie cameras, both of which are the same 32 megapixel sensors, which means selfies and portrait shots all turn out quite good. What Oppo has done with the Find N shows us that there's more than one way to make the book style foldable. You can have a big screen on the inside and a useful screen on the outside without resorting to a behemoth of a phone. But it's not perfect. The biggest issue is that it won't be available outside China. The launch prices for China start roughly around 92,000 rupees, which is aggressive and undercuts the current foldables by some margin. But if this becomes the template for future foldable smartphones from Oppo, the flexible phone market's landscape is looking very bright indeed. Let's move on now to another very impressive phone, the Moto G51. So similar to many other Motorola phones that have come out, polycarbonate construction, dual color on the back, IP52 water repellent, good screen, 6.8 inch IPS LCD display, 120 hertz refresh rate. So single hand is a bit of a task, you know, working with it because it's a nice big screen. Snapdragon 480 plus SoC, single variant, 4 GB, 64 GB storage, has expandable storage, has that typical Android Motorola experience, which is very, very clean. Triple camera setup. The camera is quite okay. Decent photos. 12 5G bands, which is a great thing. Priced at 14,999 with the 5,000 mAh battery. Here's our review. 5G in India is still in its infancy when network providers are beginning 5G trials. However, that has not stopped smartphone makers from releasing plenty of 5G supported devices in the country in a wide price range. The latest phone to arrive is the Moto G51 5G. It's a budget-focused phone which competes against a bunch of phones from Redmi, Realme and Poco. So how well does it come out against its competition? We find out in our review. The Moto G51 5G follows the design language that we can see in the most modern Moto devices with the same old-school but robust design. The device features flat edges on the side with a plastic back panel with dual color contrast. The back panel of the device is highly prone to smudges, so make sure that you have a back cover while using the device. At 9.1 mm thickness and 208 gram weight, the phone feels quite heavy, which makes carrying the device a bit cumbersome. Coming to the display, the Moto G51 5G features a 6.8 inch IPS LCD display with a punch hole cutout and a prominent chin at the bottom. And despite being an LCD screen, it is good in color reproduction and contrast. The slightly taller aspect ratio makes the phone ideal for content consumption. But since the device is tall, to access the volume rocker, you'd have to stretch your fingers or slide down your palm. So we wish that the handset was a bit handier. The good thing is that the fingerprint scanner, which is part of the power button, is accessible as well as accurate. There is up to 120Hz high speed refresh rate and a 240Hz touch sampling rate. This means everything from regular scrolling to game animations should respond smoother than a standard screen. Brightness levels on the G51 5G always felt quite adequate for outdoor usage and we did not encounter any problems while reading text against direct sunlight. As for the audio, the G51 5G comes with a downward firing single speaker, it's rather tinny sounding and it lacks the depth in terms of audio experience. The Moto G51 5G is the only smartphone in India 
offering the Snapdragon 480 Plus chipset, which is then paired with 4GB RAM and 64GB of storage. Now, don't go by its name because it is a spiritual successor to something like a Snapdragon 720G instead of Snapdragon 480. On a daily basis, the Moto G51 5G runs swiftly. Whether reading through mails or Instagram or even heavy multitasking, the G51 kept its cool. Even while gaming, the Moto G51 held on to its composure well. Many modern titles like Call of Duty and Asphalt 9 did not tax the phone highly. There are 12 bands of 5G support, which is a lot more bands than most competitors. On the software side of things, the Moto G51 5G is based on the Android 11 operating system that provides a near-stock Android experience. Coming to optics, the phone has a 50MP sensor which is paired with an 8MP ultra-wide shooter that also has depth capabilities and a 2MP macrovision camera. The primary shooter gets you crisp images with average dynamic range but very good color reproduction. The ultra-wide shooter is much more adept at getting a larger field of view while keeping the elements of the scene in place. As for the macro sensor, its ability to shoot with reasonably good detail is adequate at best. The smartphone is equipped with a 5000 mAh battery and a 20 watt rapid charger. Based on the user you are, the smartphone can easily last a day with moderate to heavy use. Priced at 14,999 rupees, the Moto G51 is a considerable option for gamers and binge watchers at the price range it is being offered. In a sea of affordable 5G phones around 15,000 rupees, this earns a solid recommendation from us. Now let's move on to another review and this is a phone that has really impressed us all out here at Selguru, the Techno Camon 18. Now the Camon series by Techno is all about great camera. This time they've taken it into the video. Amazing stuff, this movie master and so many other elements and filters and things you can do. Great stuff. So 48 megapixel triple rear camera, then 48 megapixel selfie front camera. 4 GB of RAM can be expanded to 3 GB more with the virtual setting. So 7 GB of RAM, very nice 6.8 inch FHD plus display, Helio G85 processor, 5000 mAh battery, priced at just 14,999. Amazing stuff. Better cameras are one of the top reasons for people to switch phones. In fact, some would say imaging is one of the biggest areas for innovation and differentiation when it comes to smartphones. That's exactly what the Techno Camon 18 is focusing on to stand out in the mid-range segment. But imaging is just one aspect of a phone. Can the overall package deliver a punch to the many established alternatives? Let's find out in the Selguru review of the Techno Camon 18. Techno is punching above its weight with the design of the Camon 18. The phone is adopting premium design elements and it shows in the look and feel. The phone is even IPX2 rated, something that isn't too common in the mid-range price segment. Available in two colors, dusk grey and iris purple, the phone fits well in the hand despite the large screen and the buttons have good tactile feedback too. Up at the front is a bright 6.8 inch full HD plus screen with a punch hole camera. Unfortunately, there is no AMOLED panel or high refresh rate here, but it suffices for everyday use. The 500 nits of brightness in particular is great for outdoor use and the colors come out as punchy. Performance 2 is no slouch with a MediaTek Helio G85 chipset and 4GB of RAM bringing enough oomph to power through most games and day-to-day -day use. We also like the Android 11 High OS 8 that has been suitably optimized for the hardware. Techno is, however, yet to reveal any details about Android 12 rollouts. Another feature crypt from premium phones is the virtual RAM extension. The phone can expand RAM by 3GB for additional multitasking if you are a heavy user. The onboard storage is 128GB but can be expanded further via a micro SD card. Keeping the phone running all day long is a 5000 mAh battery. Charging, however, is very slow at 18 watts and you will have to factor in about an hour and a half to charge the phone. Coming to the cameras, you might be used to 48 megapixel rear cameras. But the Techno Cam on 18 has an additional 48 megapixel sensor as the selfie camera. This results in sharp, contrast rich, and well detailed images. The phone would be a good option for users who click a lot of selfies. 
Similarly, the rear camera too performs adequately in bright sunlight. The dedicated night mode helps the phone keep up with competitors in low light, but we notice some noise. Video capabilities are limited to 2K resolution. Additionally, there are no ultra wide or telephoto sensors on this phone. Overall priced at 14,999 rupees, the long lasting battery life, sleek look, and sufficient performance make the Techno Cam on 18 a decent option to consider if your primary use case involves a lot of selfies plus a phone with a good screen, long battery, and a good chipset as part of the package. Let's take a quick break right now on the Cell Guru Show. When we come back, lots more. Now let's move on to a campaign that I feel very closely with because this is a campaign right after my own heart. Vivo, the switch off campaign. Vivo, a phone company, is telling us that, look, our phones are amazing, but do realize you could be getting addicted. You've got to have a phone life balance switch off your phone. So a lot of interesting statistics. This is the third year that they've been doing it. Some startling statistics that are coming out. Parents confessing that their excessive use of smartphones have hurt their relationship with their children. Children not behaving well. I'll tell you another statistic that was very concerning to me. So pre-COVID, we were using our phones for something like, you know, four, four and a half hours. Then around the pandemic and the COVID era, 6.5 hours on the smartphone. But the really bad part is that even though lockdown and the pandemic are a bit better, we're still using six hours plus right now. Here's a quick look at the entire study and then we'll do an interview with the people behind it. It's hard to disagree with the fact that smartphones are no longer just a tool. An integral part of life, they are the unifying bond that connects families and friends, close or distant. And the importance of a phone is connecting parents with their children is no less. Vivo's latest study in partnership with Cyber Media Research aims to find out exactly how much of a behavioral impact excessive smartphone use can have on children and their relationships. Now, in its third edition, the campaign dubbed as Switch Off brings to light the unique relationship dynamics that are surfacing due to excessive smartphone usage. First, the good. The study showed that over 84% of surveyed users agreed that smartphones are integral for staying connected and that they have boosted productivity as well as the quality of life. In fact, this effect was further pronounced during the COVID-19 pandemic when it allowed users to feel safe, secure and entertained. Unfortunately, it has triggered addiction response in many users, with average daily smartphone usage times increasing by 32% since pre-COVID times. It has led to users spending as much as six and a half hours on their phones every day. Because of the prevalence of smartphone use by parents and children, even while spending time together, 74% of Indian parents feel that their relationship with their kids may be hurt because of smartphones. But the one worrying highlight that really stands out is that 90% of parents agreed that children are getting more aggressive due to extended smartphone use. The silver lining to the study conducted with over 1100 consumers in eight different cities, however, is that while the smartphone has become a part of their daily routine and cannot be separated from it, users are just as informed about the need to spend uninterrupted time with children as well as the positive effects of it. And perhaps just like the title of the study, it is indeed time to switch off just a bit. That was the study. Let's talk to the people behind it. I'm going to talk to Yugendra Sriramula, Director of Brand Strategy for Vivo, and Isha Mehta, Psychologist, Meadow Health. Thank you so much for joining me and congratulations, Yugendra, on continuing the switch off campaign from Vivo. Very important initiative. I'm glad Vivo has continued to lead from the front. But my first question is to do with that. Now, why does a smartphone brand like Vivo champion the cause of switching off and finding a balance between phone life and life itself? Isn't that detrimental to your own product? A very pertinent question. First of all, thank you for having me on the show. My perspective is that smartphones are probably uh, the most important innovation which has happened uh, in the recent past. Uh, in fact, even in the survey, we see findings where a lot of people have said how it helps them connect with loved ones, how it boosts their productivity. So if we are able to give joy to consumers, we are very happy about it. But if excessive usage is leading to a problem, then it is equally a responsibility to bring this to people's notice and help people take corrective actions. And Switch Off has this message at its core. Great, Yogendra. I'm really glad that maturity is there with Vivo as a brand. What have been the new findings different this year from the previous year? 
if i have to simplify it i would say there are three parts to the survey so part number 1 people are beginning to use their phone even in what were erstwhile very social family kind of settings at dining table uh, in your hall uh, while sitting with your family so now people have replaced this social time with a very uh, individualized and immersive device which is the smartphone so the second part of the survey 66% of the parents are confessing that they are always on their phone when they are spending time with kids 74% of the parents three out of four parents have confessed that their relationship with their kids has been hurt because of the time they are spending on their phones the third part is because of this behavior of the parents and because of the usage of phone even by the kids 90% of parents are saying that their kids are getting aggressive with other kids okay pretty scary some of that stuff right okay and how's the pandemic changed mobile phone usage are we more addicted reliant on a phone than ever before after all one of the main saviors during the pandemic and lockdown was our phone so now for us to kind of cut back is a little bit difficult right we developed this uh, deep interaction with the phone you know during this pandemic a very very deep attachment and love for our phone it's absolutely inseparable to be Uh, you know away from our phone the adverse effects that uh, you know i have come across with is a lot of uh, anxiety a lot of mood changes irritability anger outbursts aggression in children as well as adults i feel you know uh, the good side and the downside both are there and what we need to do is first become aware of the problems that we are facing and together as parents and children sit across talk to each other and address these issues that then was our first show in 2022 for cell guru and what a big bang start we've had but of course we're just going to continue this all through the year do join me next week